Norman Corwin brings you his Odyssey of Runyon Jones. Being a fantasy in six scenes and one act with no moral attached. The fifth program, incidentally, of this series. Starring Michael Artis as Runyon. And illuminated by an original musical score composed and conducted by Alexander Semler. Lost dogs? Yes. I'm looking for my dog. Your name? Runyon Jones. Runyon? Yes, sir. It's a terrible name, but Mother says I'll like it when I grow up because it's distinguished, she says. The other boys all call me Onion. What's the name of your dog? Putsy. Putsy? Yes, sir. He's very smart, sir. When did you lose him? Yesterday morning. Where? Right outside my house. He was chasing an automobile. Why? He wanted to bite the tires, I think. Front or rear? All of them. What happened? The car ran over him. And then? He was killed, sir. Then you're on the wrong floor. This is the Department of Lost Dogs. What you want is the Department of Deceased Dogs. Where is that, sir? Two flights up. Here, take this slip and hand it to the man at the desk. Thank you, sir. Department of Diseased Dogs? Deceased, not diseased. Let me see that slip. Yes, sir. Hmm. Putsy. You run in, Jones? Yes, sir. Just a minute. Let me look at the file. Jones. J. Orlando. Penelope. Pluto. Putsy Jones. Mm-hmm. One and a half years old. Inveterate auto chaser. Leash. Attitude. Hmm. Young man, uh, I don't think there's anything we can do for you. You can't find Putsy? Ordinarily, in a good many cases, when a boy's dog dies from old age or natural causes, or is merely run over while chasing a cat in line of duty, or is fatally wounded in a fight with other dogs, we can make arrangements with St. Bernard, the proprietor of Dog Heaven, for the return of the animal on a limited basis. What's a limited basis? But, in the case of Putsy, he's down in the files as an inveterate auto chaser and tire nipper class four. Also, it is known that he's resisted leashes, that he bit a dog catcher on August 11th last, and that he stayed out all night on three separate occasions. I'm sorry to say he's not in dog heaven. No? Gosh. Are you sure, mister? Couldn't he have snuck in when nobody was looking? He is not in dog heaven, and that settles that. Well, where is he, then? In a place where all ill-behaved curs are punished. Purgatory. Where's that? I'll go there. Oh, no. Impossible. But he won't chase any more automobiles. I swear it. Look, honest, I'll spit on my hand and touch my forehead three times. What's that mean? That's the secret oath, the Elmwood Street AC, which means Pledge of Honor. Nevertheless, it will be impossible. But, Pootsie, you'll be lonely without me. I have to find him. Please go now. I'm busy. But, gee whiz, I came all the way now here. Now, go quietly, Mr. Jones, or I shall have to call an officer. I won't go. I won't go without Putsy. You've got him somewhere in your hiding among Now, listen here. I won't listen. You give me my dog back or I'll kick you in the shins. Putsy! No, no, no. Putsy! No, no. You locked him up and you won't let me have him because you want to keep him for yourself. I know. No, no. He, he, no, 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 no. Stop. Stop kicking me. No, he's not that. Officer. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on this young ruffian is a perverse character. Because his name is Jones. Quiet, quiet. I think you'd both better explain the matter to the superintendent of the division. I certainly will. I'm not going to stand for being kicked in the shins by any young brat who happens to come along. No wonder his dog's in purgatory. I can see where the animal learned his bad manners. You take that back. I did not teach Putsy his bad manners. He taught himself. Now, quiet, both of you, and follow me. We'll explain it all to the super. I will tell the super what you said. (laughs) 
I see. Well, there are things to be said for both sides. Now, first of all, I suggest that you two shake hands and apologize to each other. Well, all right. I'm sorry I kicked you in the shins, mister. That's all right. <clears throat> I uh, may possibly have lost my temper a bit, too. Yes. And now, Mr. Jones, uh, let me explain what the clerk was trying to tell you. Uh, we do not keep any dogs here on the premises. The most we can do is to refer applications to the right parties. It so happens we have connections with Dog Heaven through our good friend St. Bernard. But unfortunately, there's no contact whatsoever, uh, none at all, with Kurgatory. Well, isn't there any way of getting to Kurgatory, sir? Because I'll go myself if you'll only tell me how to get there, sir. I got here by myself. Clerk, there's obviously quite an attachment to the dog in this case. He was attached to a leash, but he kept breaking away on account he liked to run fast. Yes, um... Now, Mr. Jones, I think you're a likely lad. So I'm going to tell you frankly that the chances of your ever getting Putsy back are very, very slim. They are? Why is that, sir? Uh, because Kurgatory is a great, great distance away and extremely hard to get to. In fact, nobody we know seems to know just how one does get there. But if you're willing to take risks and chances... Yes, sir, I'll do anything... Gee, Whizzikers, if you only knew Putsy. Then I'll tell you how to get somebody who may know somebody who knows somebody else who can send you to the right place so that you might be able to find out how to set out for Kurgatory. Gosh, would you, sir? Glad to. Clerk, get me Form 5, the blue slip, and also applications for the interdivisional visa and interdepartmental passport. Then clip on the transfer coupons and the pink manifest. Uh, yes, sir. Now, Mr. Jones, this is what you do. There's only one person I know who can possibly set you on the right track, and that's the head of the Division of Time. We call him Father Time. His place is quite far, and you'll have to make several changes before you get there. That's what all the tickets are for. Shall I say you sent me? Oh, uh, that won't do much good. He's very busy, and he won't have much time to talk to you. Uh, tell him quickly what you're after, and if he can assist you, he'll tell you quickly. He hates to waste time. The uh, papers, sir. Uh, very good. Mr. Jones, will you fill out this blank and sign these two while I stamp these documents? Yes, sir. Um, clerk, uh, see that he gets put safely on the golden escalator with instructions to change at the Interheaven Junction for the Nebula Express. Uh, um, uh, wouldn't it be better for him to take the uh, westbound tower special? That crosses the meridian uh, uh, two light hours ahead of the NED. Yes, but then he'd have to wait at Asterion for the ecliptic local. It's better the other way. Maybe right. Have you finished, Mr. Jones? Yes, sir. I got an ink spot all over the sheet here. Uh, will that make any difference? No, no. Well, Mr. Jones, I guess that does it. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Gosh, puts he's sure going to be glad to see me. Uh, don't be too sure you'll find him, because you're liable to be disappointed, you know. But good luck, anyway. Thank you. Now, young man, <laughs> if you come with me, I'll see that you get onto the golden escalator. All right, I'm coming. you came all the way here to ask if I know anybody who can help you find a dog named Putsy? Yes, Father Time. Uh, don't you realize that I'm very busy? Yes, Father Time, but it won't take you long to tell me whether... Quiet, quiet. I've got to listen for the time signals. Ah, ah that means that the eclipse of three moons on Jupiter was right on time. Uh, he was a little dog about so... When you hear the time signal, it will be exactly half past 1.62 on Uranus. Ah, shucks. That was 37 thousandths of a second late. I must make a note of that. We'd have to make it up in the year 7,302. 
Uh, now, what was it you wanted, little man? Well, sir, uh, could you tell me how I could get to Kirkatory? Because my dog, Putsy... Oh, yes, yes. Uh, was he a delinquent dog? No, sir, a mongrel. When you hear the musical goes, it will be the 172nd millionth anniversary of the birth of the first dinosaur. You're from Earth, aren't you? Yes, sir. Well, then I want you to know that I am heartily ashamed of the kind of time that they have down there in Greenwich. Yes, sir. And I want you to understand why. Yes, sir. Because it's so mean. It's pretty mean time. Yes, sir. And now about you and your dog. I don't know where Kirgatory is at all. It used to be on Sirius, the dog star. But the neighbors complained so about the piteous howling and whining which came from there. Well, they had to move. Why was there howling and whining? Why, because all the dogs in Kirgatory are tortured, of course. D does it hurt him bad? <laughs> well, naturally. What a question. Why, I've heard there are fleas in Kirgatory as big as a lion. That's only one of the attractions. Uh, well, uh, is there some way I could find out how to get there? Well, um, the only one that I know who could possibly help you is M.N. M.N.? Listen, don't you know anything, lad? Mother Nature. Oh. Well, well, there goes the vernal equinox on Aldebaran. Now, Mr. Putsy. No, that's my dog. A quiet Putsy. Now, here's how you get to M.N.'s place. When First... you hear the note of the face, Bhutan, that will be time for all visitors who are not invited to get ready to leave. Me. Well, you... Father Time said you might know where it is. Well, I don't, little boy. But let me think. I'll tell you who might. Just off the main skyway between Castor and Pollock, before you get to the red light of McBuddha, there's a harpy Excuse who... Excuse me, Mrs. Nature, but these papers have to be signed right away if you want to get them on the Solar Limited. Wait a minute. What's that you have in your hand? Uh vacuum bottle, ma'am, some warm nectar in case I get hungry on the way. Don't you know I abhor a vacuum? Give me that. Oh. Now, Blossom, don't let me lose my patience with you again. If you get hungry, there's plenty to drink in the Milky Way. Yes, Mother Nature. Now, Runyon, as I was saying, this harpy is a very strange spirit, full of lots of esoteric knowledge. Uh, does and... he know where I can find Footsie? Well, that I can't tell you, but there's no harm asking. Incidentally, it's a she, not a he. In fact, she's more commonly known as an it. Does it fight? Oh, no. But you may have difficulty understanding it because of the way this harpy talks. You will have to hold this little charm. Oh, now, where did I put it? Oh, yes, here it is. You will have to hold this in your left hand while the harpy talks in order to make out anything at all. Gee, isn't it pretty? It's like an Aggie in marble. Yes, it's the most charming charm I have. Don't lose it now. Because it has the power of translating the harpy's language into your own. No, ma'am. I won't lose it. I'll take care of it like as if it was putsy. Yes, sir. I mean, yes, ma'am. I mean, yes, it. <laughs> No, P O O T Z Y. Chasing an automobile. Well, uh, yes, um, uh, well, you see how it is, sir. I mean. You know, 
Nobody seems to know where Kurgatory is. I hope he does. Uh, how do I get there, Miss Harpy? I mean, Mr. I... I mean, the Harpy. Kurgatorium. Does it bite? Don't be alarmed, Mr. Jones. You see, the nearby wolves, who occupy what is known as Lupin Limbo, resent certain of the policies in practice here in Kurgatory, to say nothing of the smell. They do? Ah, 
That means the board of directors has reached a decision on your application. We can go in now. Mr. Jones, will you sit here? Thank you. Gentlemen of the board, this is Mr. Runyon Jones, the veritable whose request to be reunited with his dog, Putsy, number 17 billion, 6 million, and 12. We have just discussed. Mm. Mr. Jones. How do you do, Mr. Jones? Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Jones, we have gone into this matter most carefully. That's good. We fully appreciate the, uh, the, the pains to which you have gone and the trouble... Oh, it uh, was nothing. ...you've taken. We're also aware of the unusual devotion you have shown the said Putsy. And all these factors have entered into our decision. Yes, sir. Then can I see Putsy and have him back? The unanimous decision of the board of directors is that you may not. What? You mean I can't? Sorry, but it is entirely contrary to the established rules and regulations of the institution. If we made an exception for you, it might lead to all kinds of complications. But, but can I see Putsy for just a minute? Sorry, Joe. Not even for a teeny weeny second, just to peek at him through the bars and whistle at him like this. We are all very sorry, Jones, but nothing can be done for you. Incidentally, it may be of some consolation to you to know that there are no bars in Kirkadori. That's good. Do, do you torture Putsy Bear? He's got a lame foot, you know. Always mm -hmm. had a. I hope you don't hurt him awful. What, what do you mean by that? Cat propaganda. Just a moment, Joe. I am proud to say that we do not torture any dogs in purgatory. Where did you get that terrible idea? Father Time told me. Oh, 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 Father, Father Time. Time. Why, don't take any stock in anything he says, Joe. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we shouldn't like this to get back to Father Time, but between you and us, uh, strictly entre nous, uh, that job of his seems to have got the better of him. He's more or less known as a crackpot. That torture talk is nonsense. Oh, oh yes, really. indeed. Well, we've got a big docket to clear. Hadn't we better show Jones how to get back to the sidereal ferry? Uh, yes, sir, Jones. I'm afraid that closes the case. Sorry. This way out, Jones. Can, can I say just one more thing, gentlemen? Well, you'll have to make it fast. Putsy's a good dog. He didn't mean to bite no tires. He just wanted to race the cars to show me how fast he could run. And he could have run faster if he wasn't lame in the leg. And the time he bet the dog catcher, that big bum... Oh, that's no kind of language. Well, he was a big bum. He heard Pussy, and Pussy wasn't doing no harm to nobody. He was just chasing a cat about this staying out all night. That was because he saw me talking to Eddie Mason's bulldog, and he got jealous. You can't blame a dog for that, can you? Honest, Pussy's the best dog in the world. Or else... What did I come all this way for him? What about the day the auto ran over him and killed him? Didn't he break away from your leash? No, sir. The leash broke. Are you sure of that, Jones? Jones? No, sir. Then the said Putsy did break away. Yes, sir. Uh oh. There you are again. Please understand that we are sorry, but there's nothing we can do. Next item, gentlemen. This way out, Mr. Jones. <laughs> Goodbye, and tell Putsy I, I... Yes, I'll tell him. Goodbye. Goodbye, Putsy. Can you hear me? No, he cannot. I will tell him goodbye for you. Thank you, sir. Uh, wait a minute. Jones, where did you get that mark over your right eye? Oh, this... Oh, that was nothing. I, I got that in the accident. What accident? When I tried to prevent Putsy from being run over. And? Nothing. Well, didn't you reach Putsy in time? No, sir. Almost. But you see, the car ran over me first. Oh, the car ran over me. Yes, sir. That's how I got killed. Oh, you... Well, that's... Uh, well, now... We might consider the <clears throat> seventh point. Just a moment, Jones. Yes, of course. Yes, yes. Jones, yes, the status of the case is changed by the fact that you gave your life to save your dog. That comes under the priorities ruling affecting the seventh clause of the Constitution of Purgatory. I see. Well, goodbye, Jim. No, 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 no. You, you don't understand. You can have the said Putsy back. I can see Putsy? Yes, sir. We'll release the said Putsy from Purgatory in your custody. Y you mean now? Yes. The officer will take you. Come, Mr. Jones. Uh, yes, right away. Thanks. Gee. He's 
Down at the end of the long corridor. Well, here we are. He's right inside that door. Right inside there? Yeah. Just open the door and walk right in. Uh, wait a minute. What is it, Jones? Do I look all right? Oh, yes, Mr. Jones. been listening to The Odyssey of Runyon Jones, written, directed, and produced by Norman Corwin for CBS and starring Michael Artis in the role of Runyon Jones. Cassette copies of this series are available at 1-800-411-MIND. That's 1-800-411-MIND. Funding for 13 by Corwin was made possible by generous grants from the Amundsen Foundation and the North Star Fund. Support for the national distribution of the series comes from National Public Radio member stations and NPR. This is NPR, National Public Radio. Thirteen by Corwin on the WRVO Playhouse Tuesday night. That broadcast originally heard on June 8, 1941 on the CBS Radio Network. Mr. Corwin, a darling of the Columbia Broadcasting System in many ways, having many series, directed his way for his writing talent. Like 13 by Corwin, more by Corwin, and the Columbia Presents Corwin series, among others. Coming up in Act 2 of tonight's WRBO Playhouse, we profile the world's first radio announcer, Harold Arlen, out of KDKA in Pittsburgh. Then it's Comedy College with the Smothers Brothers, Suspense with Peter Lawford and Bill Johnstone. Then the golden era of radio. We'll hear excerpts of Radio's Golden Age, along with thoughts of a collector circa 1970. It's all good company coming your way on the WRVO Playhouse Tuesday night with the sounds of Cab Calloway and I Gotta Go Places and Do Things in the back. That will take us to the news from National Public Radio. Don't touch that dial. Bringing you the golden age of radio live, the second time around. It's the WRVO Playhouse. Good company on your membership-supported WRVO stations. WRVD, FM 90.3, Syracuse. WRVJ, FM 91.7, Watertown. WRVN, FM 91.9, Utica. WRVO, FM 89.9, Oswego, Syracuse. And online at WRVO.FM.